During the first few hectic days of the Normandy landings, the greatest fear of the Allies was a determined German counterattack on the beachhead by Hitler's powerful Panzer divisions. Field Marshal Erwin Rommel, commanding Army Group B in France, had recommended keeping the Panzers as close to the coast as possible so that they could launch immediate counterattacks the moment the Allies landed and throw them back into the sea. But Rommel was overruled by higher authority, and the Panzers were kept inland to protect them from naval gunfire and held together under Panzer Group West to strike anywhere along the French Atlantic coast where the Allies might land. This policy proved to be a big mistake, as the absence of German armour near the landing beaches, with the exception of the 21st Panzer Division, which had been relegated to Rommel as a half-gesture, meant that the American, British and Canadian troops all managed to get ashore and overwhelm the second-rate coastal defence divisions and push some miles inland. Hitler, unsure whether Normandy was the real objective, or a feint to mask an even bigger landing perhaps in the Pas de Calais further north, dithered over committing Panzer Group West, consisting of seven full-strength armoured divisions, and then the Panzers faced even more problems actually moving forward once Hitler gave the order, owing to a wrecked French rail infrastructure due to Allied bombing and resistance attacks. Precious time was lost, though the 21st Panzer Division managed a small counterattack on D-Day that reached the coast, it was unsupported and was forced to retreat. But in the days following D-Day, Panzer Group West started to arrive at the front, and resistance along the Allied lines stiffened. It was only a matter of time before Panzer Group West struck north against the beaches, an unhappy prospect for the Allies. So in response, four days after the D-Day landings, the Allies resorted to a new method to try and break the deadlock in the British and Canadian sector, where, as I show in my previous video, Montgomery's army was stuck in a terrible attritional struggle around the important Norman town of Caen, nine miles inland from Sword and Juno beaches. The greatest block to the advance in the north and to Allied operations throughout Normandy remained the powerful armoured divisions of Panzer Group West. Massing around Caen, that potentially could launch a major counterattack on the Allied beachhead. So on the 10th of June 1944, the British launched a daring air operation to cut off the head of Panzer Group West by killing its commander and his staff in a surprise strike on the German headquarters, spreading confusion in the German camp and completely disrupting German counterattack plans. Such a raid was not without precedent. In November 1941, a party of British commandos had landed by sea on the North African coast and stormed Field Marshal Rommel's headquarters with the express aim of assassinating the Desert Fox. Operation Flipper had failed, as Rommel had long since left. Assassination via the air had a longer precedent. In 1918, the RAF had attacked the four German headquarters in an attempt to kill the German Emperor Wilhelm II. But like Rommel later, he had already left when the attack commenced. I've made a video about this subject, link in the end screen. The target for the June 1944 attack was General der Panzertruppe Leo Geier von Schweppenburg, commander of Panzer Group West. On the 9th of June, Rommel had arrived at von Schweppenburg's headquarters and gave orders for an armoured counteroffensive to begin. The major problem for the Germans was that the British were able to read German communications owing to the breaking of the Enigma code used to encrypt German messages. In March 1944, the Allies had become aware of the formation of Panzer Group West and its headquarters in Paris. Then, on the 8th of June 1944, much increased radio traffic was traced to a chateau at Le Cain, 12 miles southwest of Caen. 
This indicated that Panzer Group West had established a new headquarters closer to the front. In fact, this was completely accurate. The large staff and many vehicles had established themselves in the grounds of Le Cain Chateau, the men inside the house and the vehicles parked in an adjacent orchard. The decision was taken to attack the headquarters the next day, 10th of June, the aim being to kill or incapacitate as many members of Panzer Group West staff as possible, and the RAF laid on quite a show. The British 2nd Tactical Air Force provided 42 Hawker Typhoon fighter bombers, each armed with eight 60-pound RP-3 rockets, plus 72 B-25 Mitchell medium bombers, each carrying eight 500-pound bombs. Escorting the attack force were four squadrons of Spitfires, although the Luftwaffe was not posing much of a threat in the Normandy campaign. The Typhoons would come to be greatly feared by the Germans in Normandy, as the rocket-firing planes pounced on any German vehicles moving about in daylight, severely disrupting German attempts to coordinate counterattacks and having a strong psychological impact out of all proportion to their actual impact on the battlefield. The chateau stood back from the main road at the centre of the small village of Le Cain, can be seen in the middle of this photograph, surrounded by outbuildings and trees. An orchard lay to the west of it, which Panzer Group West had used to park most of its vehicles under cover. As the RAF aircraft approached, the senior officers of Panzer Group West were having dinner in the chateau. The meal was suddenly interrupted by the wail of an air raid siren. General Major Sigismund Helmut, Reichsfreiherr von Davans, Chief of Staff, and 18 of his officers rushed outside to see what was happening. Just before the attack commenced, General von Schweppenburg had pulled into the chateau courtyard in his staff car. It could not have been more perfect. Between 2102 and 2155 hours, 40 typhoons attacked in three waves. One wave of 10 aircraft unloaded on the target rockets, while another of 20 attacked using rockets and guns. Sixty-one Mitchells were over the target from 2119 to 2121 hours, dropping 426 500-pound bombs from between 11 and 13,000 feet. Later, the RAF counted 130 bomb craters in the immediate vicinity of the chateau, and it looked as though some of the bombs had detonated in trees. In the village, only three buildings were completely flattened, but many houses suffered blast damage to roofs and windows and were scarred with shrapnel. General Major von Davans and 17 of his staff were killed, and von Schweppenburg and another officer wounded. As well as von Davans, Panzer Group West Chief of Staff, Major Burgsthaler, the Operations Officer, and Major von Veldorf, the Operations Training Officer, had died, along with Rittmeister Kuhl, Assistant Intelligence Officer. Destroyed vehicles included a large mobile office and a mobile mess, a large bus, a signals lorry, and three staff cars. The wider effect on the Normandy campaign was felt immediately. Panzer Group West's headquarters were shattered, its ability to command and organize a counteroffensive against the Allies gone. Incredibly, von Schweppenburg and his staff had been planning to launch a counteroffensive on the 10th of June, but it had been postponed for 24 hours. The loss of so many staff officers caused the attack to be cancelled. A new Panzer Group West staff was hastily rebuilt in Paris under General Heinrich Eberbach but the attack delayed German plans by three weeks. By the time the new headquarters was sufficiently recovered from the assault, the moment had passed for any German panzer counter-thrust in Normandy. One consequence of the raid was an order that in future no headquarters were to be established in Chateau. Instead, they must be away from villages and under good cover, as the Germans assumed the British had found Panzer Group West's headquarters via aerial reconnaissance rather than code-breaking, having no idea that the Enigma code was indeed compromised. The RAF's raid on Le Cain contributed greatly to the Germans' loss of battlefield initiative in Normandy. 
Without it, the Canadians and British would have been on the receiving end of a well-planned and very strong German panzer counteroffensive just days after the D-Day landings that might have tipped the strategic balance over to the Germans, with devastating consequences for the liberation of Europe. As for General von Schweppenburg, he was relieved of his command officially on the 2nd of July 1944, after making the mistake of supporting Field Marshal Gerd von Rundstedt's request that the Germans retreat from Caen, following the American Operation Cobra breakout to the south. He was relegated to Inspector General of Armoured Troops until the end of the war, and died in 1974, aged 87. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also help to support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. You can also visit my new audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. Details on all of that in the description box below.